Thank you for the privilege to be in your presence. Thank you for the privilege of life. Thank you for the benefit of salvation. Here we are again to work for the gift of life. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, for this another Wednesday that you have prepared for us and given us a platform where we are to approach before your presence. Lord, for everyone online this afternoon, this morning, this evening, depending on your time zone, I ask, oh God, that let the full package of the blessings of your people not elude them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the truth you have for everyone be delivered in the name of Jesus. For your word said, you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. Father, we have not appeared here in totality in vain, but we have come because we know that you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. And this afternoon, we know that we are not seeking you. We are not sorting your presence in vain. Thank you because our full package of blessing shall be delivered to us. We give you praise and glory, Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence. We thank you for tabernacle with us. Have your way in this midday broadcast today and let the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. It is my privilege as given by God's servant, Pastor Favor Wale Joseph, to anchor this section on her behalf. Praise the Lord. Mama, I'm grateful. Thank you so much for the privilege. And for everyone online, God bless you. God reward you. And I believe you have all shared this broadcast. And in case you are yet to do so, please do God a favor and ensure you share this broadcast widely. Let everyone that is online remember a friend, remember a family member, remember a colleague, Remember your neighbor. Remember someone somewhere that needs to be around so that we connect with God and collect that which is meant for us in Jesus' mighty name. So someone will be returning back after nine months from today with a Samuel and as, as an evidence. Someone will return back with a crown as Esther did. Someone will return back with a car. Someone will return back with an employment. Someone will return back with one thing or the other, whatever it is that you desire God to do in your life, you are returning back with you. In the name of Jesus, some of you in a month's time, some of you in weeks' time, some of you in a year's time, some of you in nine months, as God permit, you are returning back with that evidence in Jesus' mighty name. And as our mother mentioned last week, Wednesday, she said, God told her the first day of the month of March that the snare is broken. And it was just a coincidence because we were looking at the topic, dealing with the topic on offenses. And last week we did say that offenses is, can also be likened to a snare. Whoever is, um, is trapped in the spirit of offense, is like trapped in a snare in a in a snare because we can define a snare as anything that traps or entangles your life anything that traps or entangles your life most times it comes um uh it comes like luring you it comes in the capacity of a lure you you just see it as something that is normal yes it is normal for me to get offended it is normal for me to get bitter. It is normal for me to react this way because this person did this. So it comes with all subtlety. But at the end of it, it's aiming at one thing, to cause you destruction. 
and we saw last week how to stay away how to walk out of the the the, the the, the spirit of bitterness, of, of offenses, sorry. And I believe that so many of us that might have been experiencing that demonic spirit have received our deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. So on behalf of God's servant, I would like to say Happy Mother's Day. This week has actually been a week where we are celebrating the woman, a week where we are celebrating motherhood. It started on Saturday with the International Women's Day celebration. And then by Sunday, most uh, churches were celebrating the, uh, the mother, were celebrating mothers, and we call it Modern Sunday. Praise the Lord. So, and I believe if the Bible says a snare is broken, that shows that just like the scripture says in John chapter 8, verse 36, that the Son of God have. Uh, have set us free that he that the soul has made free or set free is free indeed so the snare is broken our freedom is established our liberty is established our breakthrough is established freedom from whatever has entangled us is established so now we are free and in galatians chapter 5 verse 1 the bible says we are to stand we are to stand in the liberty where in Christ have made us free. So woman and put the men online this afternoon, I want to congratulate you and to encourage you to stand in the liberty where in Christ have made you free. The reason I'm saying we ought to stand in the place where Christ have made us free is because there is the possibility for one to look back. All of us are conversant with the story of uh, Lot and his wife. The Bible says they were ensnared in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a city of captivity. It was a place where they were trapped. Their Christian identity was almost losing out. Everything about them was becoming defiled. And suddenly liberty came, freedom came, deliverance came. A way of escape was made available for them. And they were given an instruction, flee for your life, run. This also informs why um, in the in the court in the court of law when 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 an accuser or offender is uh, delivered a prisoner is delivered from a prison or uh, or a particular sentence he is given this instruction wrong so I wonder why they say wrong but the reason most times they say wrong. Is so that such an individual won't get entangled again, won't get entangled again, so that the judge possibly should not change his mind. And you know one thing that the enemy is constantly on the lookout to get the woman ensnared, to get them ensnared. But today I want to focus more on the woman because this is a period or a time where the woman is being celebrated, motherhood is celebrated, womanhood is celebrated. And I want us to take example from um, the book of Judges, the book of uh, Judges, talking about the Bora in Judges chapter 5, the verse 7. The Bible says, a time came in the days of the woman called Deborah that the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. I want every woman to understand that there is a place for you. After the snare is broken, there is a place for you. There is a place for manifestation. There is a place for enrichment. There is a place, for there is a place where God expects you to showcase that which he has deposited in you. In the book of Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 13, our love us to read the story of another woman. So that you understand Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. Sorry, Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13. The Bible says, When the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to this woman that was persecuted by the devil, we are given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into
to her place. That's verse 14. Where she is to be nourished for a time and a time and have a time from the face of the serpent. And this is what the serpent did as recorded in verse 15. The Bible says the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That he might cause her to be carried away as captive. That he might cause her to derail out of destiny lane that God has prepared for her. So as a woman, you must understand that the enemy is at war with your destiny. And the purpose for this war is so that he gets you a snake, gets you a tangle, and thereby remove you out of destiny lane. Remove you out of the place where God has prepared for you. That is to say that the little, little foxes like we looked out for, the two Wednesdays past, like the issues of offenses that accumulate into bitterness, that accumulate into jealousy, that gives back to hatred, is ending at one thing, to remove you from where God has prepared for you, to allow you not take your place in destiny. There is no way a woman that is bitter can run a race in destiny and arrive at her destination. And no wonder the Bible says we are to lay aside every weight, every weight, so that Lord of the enemy is still being poured out by him. The Bible says out of his mouth, he cast out flood so that he can stop her. But I want us to take a clue from the story of Deborah where we read in the book of Judges chapter 5 that this woman Deborah found herself in the days like we read in the book of Revelation where everything was looking stormy where the weather was, was stormy, where the atmosphere was not friendly, and where everything ceased. The Bible says it ceased with the inhabitant of Israel. There was no life again. And I can easily explain the days the border was in to the days we are in, the days where everything around us is looking gloomy. Women find it difficult to even use the money given for upkeep as to use it well because it might not be enough. We are in the days where everybody is running away. The highway seems to be empty. Even shopping malls that were crowded before looks empty. Why? Because people have no means of livelihood again. People that were successfully employed, some are losing out of job, coming back home to meet a woman with no salary, Everything just coming to a standstill. We are like in those days. But you know the good news is this, woman, that God is prophetically creating a platform where you and I will come on the scene, just like the Bora did. The Bora took advantage of a season, a season where things were not working, a season where the governance, the governance of her days was like failing. A time where men were running into hiding because there was no paper, there was no payroll, there was no money probably to give the women to go to market. The Bible says even the men were gone into hiding. I believe a situation that will make a man hide is a situation where a man cannot stand as a man to represent his family, to bring out what is expected that will make him look like a man both to the wife and to the children. Those were the kind of days Deborah found herself. But Deborah took advantage of the situation. She took advantage and came on the scene. The Bible says she arose. She arose because she had an understanding of what was in her as a woman. She had an understanding that prophetically, the woman is the one that will prepare the body of Christ for the coming of Christ. She had an understanding that she is a co-creator with Christ. She had an understanding that she is a life giver. She had an understanding that she is a spiritual incubator. She had an understanding that she is a shared provider. She had an understanding that she is a blessing. She understood her place, just like the Bible describes the proverb 31 woman. We are celebrating the woman, the woman today, 
because we expect every woman I'm talking to a woman who has understanding of her, her, her scope of assignment as outlined by the one that created her. We are celebrating this kind of a woman who had on, an understanding of the scope of her creation and is deliberate about taking her place in the marketplace. Every woman must understand that we are in the marketplace. We are in the marketplace. I have a place you have a place. We are not liabilities. We are an asset. We are created to fit into a system. And prophetically, we are the ones to open the, the books of the prophet, the agenda of God in a time as this, in a time as this. And that's why the enemy looks it and finds it easy to distract the woman so that she won't fit into the place where God has prepared for her. Look at it this way, that in the book of Genesis, after God created all that he created, from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 31, as creation was going on, God was looking at what he created and nodding his head. And the Bible says he will say it is very good. And verse 31 of Genesis 1, the Bible says, and God looked at, behold everything he created and he said it is very good very good very good but in genesis chapter 2 verse 18 after he looked around he turned back and said it is not good what happened that everything that god celebrated as product of what he created and later said it is not good remember even after he had made man in his image and in his likeness he said it is not good that this man be alone this is a man who has capacity who was created with a capacity like of god a man who was created to function in the class of god remember adam never went to any school but the bible says he gave name to everything that god created that shows that this man called adam was operating with the iq of heaven but suddenly God looked at everything he created and said it is not good. Why? Because there was a species that was expected to be on ground that would be the crown of creation. And because that species was not on ground, he said everything was not good again. That this species needed to be on ground. I want to believe that in every event of life, any great gathering, it is the dignitary that appears last. So woman, because you came last, you are a dignitary. You are a dignitary. You are prepared by God for such a time as this. And that's why you are expected to stand fast in the place where God has prepared for you and not get yourself entangled again. The Bible says that a man that is a soldier does not allow himself to be entangled with the affairs of a civilian. So this is a time where we have to stand in the place of purpose, in the place where God has created us to stand, in the place where God has created us to occupy with the grace he has created and deposited in us to showcase so that we will make meaningful impact and also make effect in the line and in the place where God has created us to occupy. So we are in a time as this that the ministry and the office of the woman is needed the office and the woman uh, the office of the woman is needed and this is the reason why the enemy gets you ensnared so that you won't stand in your place so that you won't take your place as expected by god and look at when the enemy when the serpent casted out the flood the water has flowed to get the woman carried away verse 16 of revelation chapter 12 the bible says and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which kept the commandment of god and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
So woman, you must understand that we are at war with Satan. I have made up my mind that I will run this race that no matter the distraction, I will get to the finish lane. Why? Because we have the help of God beside us. If you read the book of Psalms 124, Psalms 124 verse 7, that our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and I escaped. And why and how did the snare get broken? And how did we escape? Verse 8 explained because of the help we have in the name of the Lord. Because of the help we have in the name of the Lord. So woman, understand this, this afternoon that the help you have in the name of the Lord is the escape route to any kind of ensnaring, ensnarement or ensnaring that the enemy will want to bring your way. Whatever trap or entanglement that the enemy will want to bring along your life or along destiny lane, you have the name of Jesus as your help. So when you call on the name of Jesus, whatever it is, it must give way. The Bible says at the mention of this name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Why is Satan interested in getting you and I ensnared and trapped? Because we are treasured creation of God. We are treasured creation of God. We are women anointed with a womb to bat the destinies of men. Understand that the A to Z of a man begins with a woman and ends with a woman. A woman gives birth to a man and a man marries a woman. So everything around the destiny of a man evolves around the woman. So the woman opens the chapter of a man and another woman closes the chapter of a man. So if a man has a good mother, she gives him a good opening as a chapter in his destiny. If he marries a good wife, she gives him a closing chapter of a good destiny in his life. If a man has a bad mother, she gives him a bad opening of his destiny. And if he has a bad wife, she gives him a bad closing of a destiny. So the rising and the falling of a man is with the woman. So that's why the enemy is out to ensure that your destiny and your life gets ensnared. It gets trapped. And the instrument he uses to get in your trap looks so simple. They look so ordinary. In fact, you can explain them out. I have the right to be offended. I have the right to be bitter. I have the right to keep malice. I have the right to be angry. I have the right to hate this particular person because of this or that that this person did to me. And like we said, when it comes to the trap set by the enemy to get you ensnared, it will look so simple. You can even explain reason why you have to do or you're doing what you're doing. But the aim of the enemy is to be sure he stops you, is to be sure he hinders you from fulfilling destiny. The truth is, if you permit me this afternoon, I would want to say this, that the greatest destiny player in the whole of affairs of a man is the woman. Let's look at the book of Judges. Judges chapter 4. I will write to read verse, nine, verse 4. The Bible says, And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labidot, she judged Israel at that time. Number one, Deborah was a wife. Deborah understood also her place as assigned by God. She understood that God had given her a place to judge the people of Israel. And look at verse 5. The Bible says she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Rama and Bethel. Between Rama and Bethel. The Bible says concerning uh, uh, Rachel that there was a cry in Rama and Rachel was weeping because of her children. So Rama can be explained as a place 
where destiny is birthed, the place of prayer, and then better, the place of worship. So Deborah understood that her office requires both the place of worship and the place of prayer. Because she can't judge the people of Israel when the platform of prayer is not maximized by her. She needs to sit down to pray so that she will understand the plan and the purpose of God for the destiny of the people, of the men God has brought her way. Thank you, studio, for projecting the scripture. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 18, the Bible says, Rama, hear a voice, her a lamentation and weeping and great mourning rachel weeping for her children and will not be comforted because they were not she could not be comforted because what she expected to see in the destiny of her children she could not see it so that tells you that the process of the making of a man lies majorly with the woman she could not see she expected the destiny of her children to be great and yet she was seeing something else she expected the destiny of her children to be colorful she was seeing something else she expected the destiny of her children to be like the scriptures have described that they are the head and not the tail and yet she was seeing something contrary the bible says there was weeping and lamentation and wretched could not be comforted and the bible says that deborah dwelt her place of assignment was built between rama and better what a powerful place of assignment and woman we must understand that between better and rama is where our office of functionality is found that is where we are to take our place and the reason Satan ensnares you is so that you won't maximize your place in Rama and you won't maximize your place in Better. You won't maximize. But look at this woman called Deborah. She was able to maximize her place both in Rama and in Better. She understood that at a time I found herself that israel needed a judge and the bible says she arose as one that was not just a wife she occupied her office of a judge she occupied her office of a prophetess she occupied her office a woman who became a forerunner to barak barak said if you can't go with me i won't embark on this assignment god has given me so this is not time for us to sit down and look at situation happening. No, this is not the time to sit down and keep looking at our wardrobe. This is not time to keep checking the kind of uh, uh, makeup we are putting on. This is time to make over, to stand in the place where God has positioned us. We are factory refiners. We are destiny refiners. We are identity refiners. We are here as solution givers. We are here as shed givers. We are here as co-creator. And that is why if a woman marries a man and she understood her place of assignment between Rama and Bethel, the destiny of that man, no matter how it looks like, it will be reshaped. Haven't you seen men that were going off and as soon as they married the woman that understood the place of their assignment, not too long, the destiny of this man took shape. Haven't you seen mothers that the enemy came in the night season to take over the destiny of their children and they went back to their office between Rama and Bethel and as they lamented and mourned before God, the destiny of these children took shape. And it became strengthened. I won't forget to always share the story of my mother. The mother that gave back to Pastor Favor, Wallet Joseph and I. Once upon a time, the enemy came like a bear. The Bible says the sheep and the, and, and, and the bear uh, the, 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 the bear came to take hold of the, of the sheep that 
David was keeping, was given charge of. And then the Bible says David arose and threw the beer into two. A time came that the beer too entered my father's compound and took one of the precious soul of my parents. And then the enemy was taking this young man on a journey. And according to our mother, she went between Rama and Bethel and knelt down. And she would hold on to her womb and say, God, I am in a partnership with you. The Bible says you will give me a seed and I will raise for you a godly one. This seed is given to me by you and not by Satan. Therefore, the devil have no right over this seed. The same seed we are talking about that the enemy wanted capturing is today a pastor, a young man filled with the spirit of God, a young man anointed by God, a young man engraced by God, a young man commanding signs and wonders and making impact in his own generation, a man that was to be taken away by the enemy. So we must understand that the reason for this season where we are celebrated as women, an adventure in the congregation where you pastor or where you serve or even your children have sent you happy Mother's Day and then you are rejoicing and celebrating. But the question I want to ask you this afternoon is, are you truly a mother? Are you a mother in Israel? Like it was in the days of Deborah. Are you taking your office and conscious of your office between Rama and Bethel and not allowing sleep until the destiny of your children, on the, until the destiny of the men around you takes shape? Look at the story of this woman, the concubine wife, Rispa, of uh, Saul, who had her children harmed. The Bible says these ones were harmed. And their body was expected to be eaten by the birds of the air. But the Bible says this woman took upon her sackcloth. And then she refused to leave the place where the bodies of her children were hung. She was sending away the birds, the vultures that comes by the night season. The vultures that come by the day season in order to eat the flesh of her children. And the Bible says when King David was told what this woman did and it was told him that the bones of her children were the ones hanging on the tree king david said bring down the bones and give them a royal burial do you know what she was doing she was literally in the place of prayer declaring that the destiny of her children must end in royalty that no matter what no matter the situation they are in, because they came from a royal sea, their destiny must end in royalty. They must be honored. How many times have you put on sackcloth as a mother to say the devil, the vultures of life that has come to take and lay wall on the glorious destiny of my children? I won't let them have their way. I must stay awake. I believe respect was awake from morning till evening she was awake we must not allow ourselves to be distracted like it was with the wife of uh, lord she got liber liberated from sodom she got her freedom from sodom and yet she refused to allow herself to be loose from the entanglement of sodom the bible says she looked back Woman, it is not time for you to look back. It is time for you to look forward. It is time for you to look up. It is time to look. For, uh, it is time for you to look towards the direction where God is taking you to. There is yet somewhere called there that you need to get to. There is still somewhere that is called there. We must arise and stand as the wife of Zachariah. That even though I do not know the details of everything, that when Zechariah got told and he was, she was asked, what would the name of this child be? The elders of her family gathered and said he will be named after his father, John the Baptist. She said, not so. His name is to be called John. And when Zechariah, the husband, was asked, he gave, he wrote the same, walking in the same agreement 
walking in the same connectivity of spirit. Do you know in her days, women were not permitted to answer the elders of the city. But the Bible says she said she said no so. She understood her office. She understood her place. She understood the demand for that season. So shortly we'll be rising up to also declare not so. Whatever the enemy is bringing as a handwriting around your family. Remember the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. That the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us has been blotted out. And if there be any rewriting of such handwriting against the world or against your family. Against any of your loved ones. Against your husband. You are to arrive and say not so. This afternoon, it is time to declare boldly, not so. Right within the gates of your house, Satan, not so. There is no parking lot for you here. Right within the gate and the destiny of your children, Satan, not so. There is no end for you in this place. Right within the gate of your destiny, Satan, not so. This one cannot get entangled again. You can't get me entangled. You can't get me trapped. No matter the bait you bring my way, I won't be entangled. I refuse to allow myself to be ensnared. Not so, not so, not so. Masara koteli barakatali araba. Not so. Marakatara bos kole basantalia. Makaye koto baria. Le barakota ye ketelia. Marako zonto ye ketelia. Henceforth, I say not so. I am taking my place between Rama and Bethel. I am taking over Rakoto Baria, my office as a church, my office as a prophetess, even though a wife, I will maximize the anointing that is upon my life. The anointing of a church, the anointing of a prophetess. Makata ye koto baria, le koto baria. Over Raymond, my son, I say not so. Over Jennifer, my daughter, I say not so. Over Amos, my husband, I say not so. Someone is crying and declaring. In case the man has been overtaken in a fall, you are to arise and take your place. That is not the time to fight the man. That is not the time to mumble. That is not the time to complain. That is not the time to be found wanted. That is the time to arise and take hold on the demand of your office and say not so satan not so not so not so karabaya katalia remember the bible says god has given you a mouth and a wisdom that none of your adversary shall be able to resist no get say no matter what comes your way woman you have what it takes to silence the adversary no matter what comes your way, you have what it takes to silence the adversary. Remember the book of Revelation where we read, the Bible says the act has been commanded to help you. And what is the help that is in the name of Jesus, when you call on that name, eh, all things will roll away. When I call on Jesus, mountains, mountains, hills will skip like rams. Mountains will run. Whatever it is will flee away before you. Because the name of Jesus is as ointment poured forth. So when the name is mentioned, Satan cannot stand. So over that destiny of your child that the enemy is laying hold on, call on that name, the name of Jesus. And liberty and freedom will be established. Woman, it is time to arise. Don't allow yourself to be trapped. Don't allow yourself to get entangled. No matter what you see. No matter what you see. No matter what you see. No matter what you hear. The destiny, your destiny, your destiny is to is already anointed and engraved to be a judge and a prophetess. You are to be seated between Rama and Better. Welcome to a new season. God bless you. So don't allow the enemy to take over. You are in charge. You are in charge. Remember, uh, John chapter 8, verse 36, the Bible says, As many as the Son of God have set free, they are free indeed. So if you're online this afternoon or this morning and you have not made a decision to have the Lordship of Jesus 
as your personal Lord and Savior. The freedom we are celebrating, the liberty we are celebrating, because when the snare is broken, it is time for jubilation. It is time for jubilee. It is time for celebration. It is time for us to go forward. So if you don't have him as your personal Lord and Savior, you will still get entangled. And free property, the snare over your life can never be broken. So you are here, you are not born again. You have not known him. You have no personal relationship with him. Can you say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you have mercy on me. I ask that you cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and write my name, O God, in the book of life. Today I acknowledge that you are my personal Savior. In case you pray that prayer, there is a detailed information displayed now. Please connect to that number. Call the number and you'll be directed on what to do. We have our workers that will be ready to you and in case you're somewhere where you can't get connect because you can't get connected to the number displayed on the screen please get to a pastor and just tell the pastor you just got born again and the pastor will tell you all you need to do and then this is from us saying to you you're welcome to the family of god hallelujah and i believe that you have been blessed and you have understood that it is not so henceforth it is not so so tell yourself it is not so so it is time to honor the lord with our substance and i believe that every one of us have a seed freedom is expressed in a lifestyle giving when a man is free he would love to share what he has with everybody you understand from the book of luke chapter 8 the bible says certain women they were noted because of their giving lifestyle and if you are a man online, you can also be noted by God himself because of your giving lifestyle. The Bible mentioned that there were women that supported and gave liberally to the ministry of Jesus. So we have the details displayed. So your seed, ensure it is a seed indeed. And this also calls for those that want to partner with uh, Travel of Hannah to move this ministry forward. You can do the same, save your seed of partnership and also sow your offering we have the nigerian ubi account all details displayed and i decree in the name of jesus that your seat this afternoon is blessed and whatever you desire in your life because seed time and harvest shall not cease your harvest shall return to you bountifully in jesus mighty name god bless you god bless you god bless you this is how far we'll go today and we expect to see you again next week wednesday the same platform, same time, 12 p.m. East African time, and then 10 a.m. West Africa. And then you can connect with your own time zone. God bless you. And for everyone in the studio, we love you so much. Thank you for standing by. Dante and Cole Dickin Silas, all of you. God bless you, brother Nimrod. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. On behalf of uh, the saint woman, Pastor Favor, one let yourself have a lovely afternoon and ensure you are share the broadcast. God bless you. Love you. Bye.